Tuesday tip in the pan fitting room. So getting back to basics now, just using my Maquillage Grand Palette to do, we've done all these lovely, lovely mottling colours on, so it's not just going to be very flat and two-tone. And now I'm just using some of the lovely flat brown, and we're just going to paint in the sort of shadows, everything that's going to pull the face down. Obviously the eyes sink in, so we're just going to accentuate in there. It might be a bit clunky to start with, go a bit jowly there, but you can blend afterwards and it won't look too hammy. And we just highlight in the areas that are going to stick out. And then the last thing is just blending, taking that down just to add. But because of those lovely reds, it's not too flat. And that is just using the Mac Eyes Kate and it's Tuesday tip again. We've done, we're still doing our aging and we're still using our really useful palette. It's this one palette that can get you out of a lot of tricky situations. So using our really useful palette, we just silvered up the eyebrows a bit, but for added 3D effect, we've just laid on some very nice, just you can see some very fine gray hairs there. I'll show you, it's just a little blob of thick prosade in there. Just let that dry a bit. And just while that's drying, I'll show you, we've done that on the ears and on the, the, on the eyebrows there, and you can also do it on the nose. And then just, you can be a bit clunky when you put it in and then trim it down. So obviously that's too long, but we cut that. Let me just cut that. Tuesday tip. We're still on the theme of aging and how to do quick, simple aging without prosthetics. Um, and now we are, are going into, back to our really useful palette. And as I keep saying, we've got this lovely color in here, the metallic hair aging color. And I'm just mixing it up. You always have to get a nice thick mix with that. And if you just take here, I'm just going to just go against the growth just to silver up the hair. Can you see? It's almost like, like picking up individual, not all of it, leave some of the dark there, but you just want to paint a little bit in and go against the growth just to highlight. All from your Pam, really useful palette. Tuesday tip. Um, our aging, work in progress. We've talked about the mottling, the laying on hair, the silvering up of the eyebrows, and now getting back to our really useful palette. One of the colors that we put in deliberately is called capillary, and it's great for doing veins. Just painting in those fine broken veins that they, those of us who go filming know all about, or anyone who stands out in the cold. So just, I need to mix a slightly thicker mix there. I always use the activator on my palette because I find you get a better. So it's just all around the cheeks, particularly around the nose. And you know, keep obviously telling your actor to be careful and keep their eyes closed is really good just to pick up those little fine veins all up. Tuesday tip this week and we're live from the Makeup Caravan. So we all know about the Jordan um, palettes that are brilliant for tattoo coverage. Um, there's dark, there's light and there's body impression. Um, so then not only are they good for tattoo coverage, they're also really good we discovered this week um, as well as the bald cap coverage you can do quickly and um, death makeups you can do because these last so long. They're brilliant for spot cover. You can just put a little bit on and then go over with your base and it stays so well. And it has less sheen maybe than alcohol activated palettes for spot cover, but it stays, it covers really well. We also found this week that if your actor has got a kissing scene, you can use the um, palette colours to replicate the lipstick and it doesn't come off. It doesn't transfer. Look at this. Tuesday tip this week and we're coming from the prosthetic show filming this 
and we're really excited about our Pam hair palette. Rachel and I put these colours together. It's really good for students because it's a very good price. And we've done the lovely pool here, half dark and half light. Now you can see it's got a very strong yellow tone still. And that's because if you go straight in with your silvers, it will go grey. So I'm just putting the finishing bits of grey on because I've put the yellow. I use this one. And I'm, you've got to use the warm colours to put the grey in because if you don't, it will just go, um, it will go very, very, very blue. So here is a quick way. I know this needs brushing through afterwards, but this is a really good way of greying up, silvering up hair. And on this side, we've done the darker colours. So we've literally done half and half. Tuesday tip coming from the prosthetics event again and we are still going on about our fabulous hair palette and what we're going to do now on Paul last time we did him half grey and half dark and we, we realized we hadn't shown you that one of the lovely colors that we included is soft black and it's not a horrible hard black it's a warm black it's a very sort of believable black and you can just see we're taking the grey out now of Paul's hair. You can just comb it through. Always have another brush just to comb through again so it doesn't get too stiff and sticky. And a little bit of shine spray afterwards because these palettes always just take some of the shine off. But you can just see how well that covers if you need to cover up your actor's grey. Tuesday tip, beating up. Tonya is here. <laughs> And you just get a little teat, which you can buy in boots, cut the top off. So you're left with a little tiny tube bit, which you ask the actor to put up their nose. nose. And they can still breathe then, which is quite helpful. And then just accentuate the swelling. And it's just to make the nose look. I'm using the PPI bruising gels, which are really, really good. Very sheer. Just put a bit more red on there. You do use the mover to move them around, but you can see how it's just making the nose look, you look in Tonya, making the nose look very, very deformed. And then maybe at the end of the day, just a little bit of dried blood. Again, I'm using the PPI dried blood because I really like it. Just like it's collected around the inside of the nostril. And you can see, Tuesday tip, collodion scar. I've already put makeup on and I've already done one earlier on Tom. I'm going to work quickly because it takes a while for collodion to go. Always works better in a fleshy part of the skin, so I'm just going to paint on. I'm going to be quite generous with it in the hope that it will take quite quickly. Let me just pop that down. Use a thin hairpin, push in hard and squeeze the skin. That's why it works better in the soft, fleshy part of the face because this collodion pulls the skin tight to make a puckering scar as opposed to a protruding scar, like an, a knife wound. So you can see how it's starting to pull there. Tom, can you feel any pull in there? Yeah, you can just, feel it already. It, feel, it pulls the skin tight. And a, another good trick is to actually get the end of your cotton bud and just push it in. So you get like a sort of whole part of the scar. A tip, collodion scar. Here's one I did earlier, you can see. So go for a fleshy bit of skin. Just gonna paint on. If you can see that there, so I'm gonna go that way. I'm being really fairly generous. Modeling tool, and I'm just pushing in. You can use a little hand fan on this if you want to sort of speed this up. But you can see I'm actually pushing that in quite deep. Obviously, don't hurt the model. Now, you can see already, without any colour, that's got a 3D, 3D look. Now, I'm just colouring now with a little bit capillary from the pan palette. So, collodion and the pan palette and a modelling tool. Tuesday tip coming live from the prosthetics event um, today. If you've got to stick a beard on and it's got to be a really strong stick and it's, you've got to act fast, the walker tape 
double-sided, incredibly strong, is really good. You might need the glue if you go around the edges, but this stuff is stronger than glue. You can see we've already stuck full, so we're just gonna take those off. I promise you this is better than, you don't wanna put it anywhere where there's too much is in there and that is really really so you just go around the edges with your glue <laughs> moustache going on you'd have to tap that down but this stuff is really strong and it's in there great for stud guys Tuesday tip this week is getting walker tape off quickly this is really useful if you're getting walker tape out of hair where you put your weft extensions on but last the last tape we, the last tip we showed you was putting a beard on really quickly for a stunt man so if you're getting it off and you're trying to get that tape off you just put a little bit of IPA or in fact ProClean and you'll find that it pulls it off it's really not painful oh, I think Paul would be honest with me and tell me if it was but it just pulls it up it kind of sort of dissolves it all really handy in the hair in the hair use IPA because ProClean can be a bit greasy in the hair Tuesday tip Hi I'm Richard Martin for Pam and what I'm going to show you here is how I approach how to glue the lower eyelid down benefit close your eye if you look to do it with the actor's eyes closed, their eyelashes overlap the piece. So what I like to do, and your model has to trust you, is get the model to look up, then look up for me, and you can see there, it completely clears the area. So I get a nice bent brush with a bit of glue on, and I'll stretch the piece out, get my glue underneath, go all the way down, and I'm actually back painting the piece rather than the skin, and then that way, give that a second to flash off. I can press it down with my stomper. And look forward, relax. And there you go, all glued down, no glue on the eyelashes, and you can blend that off and carry on painting. Tuesday tip today, and we are talking about doing tattoos, which I've been doing a lot of in the last four years, because I've been doing sort of Viking and Roman stuff. So these pens, which you've probably all seen, but the, the good thing is they now come in 25%, 50% and 75% strength, which means that they're a bit more forgiving. So for example, you're an actor who needs to do a tattoo for something he's in, or you're doing a tribal tattoo as a makeup artist and you haven't had time to get a bespoke one made. These are very, very, because it's 25% strength, very forgiving. You can see um, much less strong than the 100% ones that we're all used to. And further in here, in my new Pam apron, we've got these lovely cotton buds come from my kit coat, really sharp and pointy. You can correct very easily because the point is so sharp. Hi, Tuesday tip today, and we're going to be doing blisters with simulation pour clock. And we also have here a maquillage palette, palette knife, and some powder plaster spray. So I'm going to start just by stippling on, very roughly, just some reds. In the middle, I'm going to put a little bit of the yellow. And this is where your blister is actually going to be situated in the middle. I'm just going in with a little bit of darker. You don't want this to be even, you want this broken up. We then get the simulation, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but let's just call it blister from maquillage. Put a blob in the middle right over your yellow bit and then you just blend away, spray with plaster and leave to dry for one minute. Three. Uh, this is a uh, Pam's Tuesday tip. This is my um, DAP silicone fast setting silicone. And I'm just going to show you very quickly how you have to mix it and add two colours just to uh, change the base colour to closely match someone else's skin tone really quickly and really fast. So that's the base colour as it goes on. That's the lightest one. And then if we add a small amount of yellow, maybe a small amount of green to the mix, um, these pigments don't go off unless they're mixed in with the silicone. 
and now you can see quite quickly how you can quickly make turn the base silicon into a close proximity to somebody's skin tone. It and we're still talking about our amazing with electric tongs, adjustable heat setting, swivel. We're using the three and the five mils. So that's tiny. It's almost as thin as your tail comb. Um, now we are doing them at the best price, and uh, they are obviously great if you're, you've got wig work and you really want to get down to that root. But one other thing that, that we've discovered, and I'm sure a lot of people know this, but for those of you who don't, if you've got a wig that's kicking out, doing helmet head, we call it, where it goes in and out like that, if you do a vertical tonging, tonging on your wig like that, all the way down, right down to the bottom, when you comb it out, it just diffuses it. It makes it just a bit more fuzzy all the way through and it just stops that helmet, that wiggy helmet, helmet head. With a couple of pleats in there, that does not kick out. Tuesday tip coming live from set. I'm gonna treat myself to a new Zuka because it's really, it's really mudded up out here and a new bag at the end of this. Anyway, if like me, you need to transport scars down to set and you're worried about them, they're filled with probondos, so they're hugely sticky. So it's difficult getting silicon to stick to anything, but if you use the new Blue Walker Super Strong Tape, you can stick your filled Pro Bondo in a little box and you know it won't roll around. Blue Walker Tape, it's fantastic. A tip, filling your mould and encapsulating it using Pro Bondo. This is one, a mould that Shauna made, so it's a lovely mould, you can see there, nice and clear. First of all, a little bit of Vaseline rubbed into your a thin layer, rubbed into your mould. Secondly, a couple of layers of the Mould Life Super Spray Bondi. Just spray from a distance. Let it air dry, or you can dry it using a fan. Finally, fill it with your, I'm using the Mould Life um, Pro Bondi, which is a lovely pinky colour. Then just scrape off, I'm using a card here, Japan card. Like that, and then like that. This is Shauna's method of filling and scraping. In the dehumidifier, let it cook. Then when you take it out, clean around the edges with a little bit of acetone to get rid of the plastic. Uh, hi, so we are putting a wig on Elise today. Uh, we've got quite a strong center parting, so to sell that, we just want to get that nice skin tone underneath. So um, we've prepped Elise's hair here, it's all ready to go on. So we've placed some bald cap um, on the top of Elise's head, painted a nice strip of skin tone down the centre and just blended out the edges with some dark. So when we place the wig on. Then we get that little bit of skin down the centre which just makes it nice and believable. Thanks! So for today's Tuesday tip with Pan Am, um, I'm going to show you a way of attaching a switch. So you can do this on a, on a human head of hair, um, not just wigs. Um, I'm going to get a bit of hair, feed it through a hairpin. I'm going to feed the hairpin through the loop of the switch and then pull that hair through there. And we don't want to take too small a section of hair because we want the weight to be distributed evenly just so it's got a bigger surface area. Now I'm going to take a couple more sections and we're going to do this into a little plait. And then we're going to take one of these dental bands available at Pam. just tie that up here. Now because of this plait it's not going to undo and that will stay there nice and secure now. Tuesday tip, tears. We're often asked to help actors produce tears and this is the traditional way with a tear stick, which still works. Some actors prefer a tear blower where the crystals go in the middle, cotton wool either side, you stand next to them 
and you blow. Some actors don't like their personal space being um, invaded like that. So we at Pam have now got this, which is actor. They do it themselves. Basically, you just load the middle here. I use my tear stick in here. It's very simple. Put it on. The actor then just puts this in his mouth, blows, and he controls exactly what's going into his eye. It's very simple, but it works really well. There's your different methods, all three. All at Pam. So today, I'm going to talk about Alicia Poxrucker's Gentleman's Polish, which she made specifically for males and presenters, and it's really lovely. It's it's a bit like, um, well, it's just very, very good. It's nicely packaged, very simple, small range of colours, really good on sweaty men because it's quite matte and it's mineral, so it's good to use on skins. It's got a lovely, it goes on very sheer, very popular with, with male presenters, use it a lot. It's got a lovely, you don't need to powder it, it's got a lovely sheen, it's got a lovely feel to it. So, Alicia's po Alicia Pox Ruckers Gentleman's Polish, because it is just a polish. This new tip at Pam, we are using Maquillage Death Face. Here, Tonya has got a very light wash of a death face over one side of her face. As you can see, she's gorgeous and brown usually. Um, very young skin, so very hard to take the colour out. We've got the Mac Pro Death Base here. It's based on their wax products, but a thinned down foundation version. I've poured it out onto this palette and you can just paint it onto the skin like you would a foundation trying to knock back any of the lovely gorgeous skin colour in Tonya's face build it up, obviously it will take you a bit longer than I've got and then you can add mottling to that with the Maquillage Death palette which is what I've done on this side so here's the new PTM materials, which is Pro Bondo. The good thing is it comes in a large range of colours. The most popular being the light flesh. But it's absolutely gorgeous. It contains tiny... That, that, this is a strange colour. This is the dead flesh one. Um, but it's very, very good. It's got little flocking bits in that have coloured it. You can always... Add a drop of this to your mix before you paint it into your. Here's some of Shauna Harrison's design, brilliant moulds, which, as you know, are clear, so you can see where you're placing them. So, everything you need to do a fantastic wound. Tuesday tip here from the van in Budapest dried in blood. This is nice and set now, you can see. And it can be, if you've got to get it off in a hurry, it can be really hard. You have to really scrub and it can leave a lot of stain in. So, just showing you Fleet Street, which is PPI plasma soap. If you just work this in, and you'll see it gets all the really ingrained stuff out. And then wet one or flannel, and it leaves no staining whatsoever. So this is the fourth week in on Pam's Tuesday Tips with Cuts, now ready for blood. Uh, most uh, bloods are water-based uh, water and therefore on silicon, which is water repellent, will bead. As you can see from this blood here, it just wants to disappear. So what we need to do to stop this is to put a little bit of washing up liquid. I want it mainly inside my wound. Uh, but if I needed to drip blood, I would also need to just dab it over the edges there. And then I can come in with my blood and it will stay. So I can then come into the interior here. And I like to find my point to point as this is actually a cut. And just see what the insides are starting to look like before I add more detail. Darker blood, maybe drip it, etc. Um, and it's quite important to keep the edge at this point clear, I think. 
So here, uh, Pam, on uh, Tuesday Tips, what we're doing here is just giving a few ideas when you're creating different wounds. Uh, for instance, with a bullet hole, the entries are usually small, and it's quite good to make sure the edges, like with the cut, are smoothed down to the skin, but don't completely enclose the circle. Um, somehow it looks better sometimes when it's a little bit open and not a complete circle. And also when you're doing wounds more like gashes, skin doesn't really come up and peel and go frilly, uh, a bit like I describe them, like waves going backwards. If you want to appear chunky, it needs to be filled and drop down level and then almost go the other way. So it's a matter of filling that if you do go wrong and having it go upwards into the wound more. Okay, so we're here for Tuesday tip today and I'm going to show you how to create some skin effects using IPA with grease palettes to create some skin effects. And here, for instance, it's bruising. This one is completely done with just grease and it's lying on top of the surface of Laura's skin, which at a distance works quite nicely for the ten intensity. However, close up, bruising is a lot of pixelation. So for high definition and the bigger screen, you need it to have more dotting effect. And this is uh, using the same grease uh, palettes, but mixing it with IPA. So dipping a brush into IPA and then into the grease, what I did was I started with a slight wash, which when the alcohol evaporates, leaves it looking as though it's coming from underneath Laura's skin. So using the same colours exactly, taking the yellow, then I used a little bit of green, coming in, you can see the colours build up slowly. Into okay, this week's Tuesday tip is to do with camouflaging bruises. And I'm only going to do half of this little bruise on Rachel's leg. Mainly, bruises tend to have a lot of blue, start blue. And the opposite to blue in primary and secondary colours is an orange. So anything from peach to orange to reds helps with this area first. And dotting it on is key. As you can see, skin is nicely mottled. So after that, we might want to go a lighter, almost yellow tone. And again, dot it on spread slightly beyond might be necessary beyond the actual bruise area and gently gently pat it in and keep building up till you lose that blue effect of the bruise adding a skin foundation can sometimes help as well over that but we gradually lose that area